faction. I totally understand that every faction will um, and should have um, access to all ships, regardless of where the um, origination of the manufacturers from. However, in respect to the upgrades and the loyalty points, and again, I know it's nothing solidified in that regard, but that's what really uh, made me think: is it is it worth holding on to a ship that doesn't have really any of these upgrades or whatever? And I'm gonna have a really hard time achieving compared to something I'll have an easier time achieving. Should I buy that ship that has these increased um, uh, uh, maximize modules in, in that respect from someone else instead. Like, what are your guys' thoughts on that? So I'm just trying to, to get it straight. So you're asking, for example, let's say you're a mud faction, you buy a Visu ship, and you are concerned with not having the ability to create Visu's components for that ship. Yeah. For example. Yeah. That's interesting because I, but perhaps Chipto can correct me, but I, I, I don't think. Yeah, perhaps it was mentioned that loyalty also unlocks modules. I think potentially, but primarily, I think it is experience with actually creating those modules and or ships for the manufacturer, which means if you, uh, I mean, if you, yeah, that is a good, yeah. So if you buy a Visu ship, you can, of course, just also buy the Visu components. And if you are contemplating uh, uh, not being able to create them yourself, and you want to actually take up the profession of going into component slash module creation. Um, well, that means probably that you're able to, to create, uh, let's say a peer ship or something that is in, inside of your faction uh, and also create the modules for that one. Um, so I'm not entirely sure then why you would want to buy a Visu ship, but because I mean, you're right. I mean, Visu's components will be made by people who are in that, uh, in the, in the Uftor faction. So, but I mean, if you buy the ship, you can also buy the components, I guess. But perhaps I still didn't really get you completely. Sorry for ranting. For no, rattling on. <laughs> you, you, you're understanding his question correctly and everything like that. But I also don't think that, I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe Chip can uh, basically correct me along the lines and so on. But I don't know or I don't think that modules are going to have a, um, a placement with each faction. Like, for instance... Uh, mud is only going to make certain uh, modules, and mud is like singleized to those uh, to those modules. And I don't. It might be something that comes later on, but for the first iteration of what modules could be and everything like that, I don't think that would basically come into play with that. Like there could be, I don't know, maybe say like one or two, and maybe say I could maybe say like two per faction modules. That each that those factions can only make per those factions, but then uh, but the, then coming back to that at the same time is uh, those those modules will be offered. So even if you have the visas and everything like that, if those are the modules that you essentially want for that ship, you I mean they will be available on the market. Like most of these things over here uh, for uh, ships, uh, whether it's module or whether it's basically the ship itself, it's not restricted to any faction, so it can go across faction but it's it might just cost you more um in regards to that faction's uh, modules so, i see that, that I makes a lot of sense if, i don't know if 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 um if modules are going to play a faction per uh, a, a play a role per faction sorry wording yeah. not yeah. with me tonight um but uh, i think um because uh, like generalizing across all of the factions and everything like that when you go to each of the shops currently how their outlay is and everything it, it looks exactly the same across all of them. They all have the same modules. They all have the same components, uh, uh, apart from, say, like weapon hard points and the size of the components itself or uh, the size of the module itself. But otherwise, it's, 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 it's pretty much generalized across all of the ships currently. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I mean, I, since uh, Chipto doesn't want to spot well, too much. I want to ask a today. question. Oh, oh, I okay. just want to ask a question. I'm not. Don't don't read into my questions too much. I'm I'm just actually just trying to gather community opinions here. So, what do you do? You guys like the idea of components and modules being like a manufacturer specific, or do you think that they should be more general? Um, and then, what should be manufacturer specific, and what should be more generalized? Like, should we should a warp drive have one recipe? I mean. Maybe if the the size changes, it, the recipe changes. But if if a small if your player is crafting a small warp drive, do do 
does what does the community think about that being now partitioned out across all the manufacturers too, and all the manufacturers have different recipes? I, I just want to know what people think. Yeah, I, um, I think it's pretty awesome to have specific things per per manufacturer because the, the, that allows for more min maxing opportunities, which is a the thing I always like a lot, to be honest. And actually, I can remember that, that's what I wanted to mention before that you gave an example last time, uh, talking about modules where peers. Uh, would unlock a, if I'm not mistaken, some militaristic, uh, specialistic module uh, that, I, if I'm not mistaken, you could apply to each and every ship out there. But I really like the concept that this one manufacturer is the only one that can create uh, this component to that exact configuration. Um, and I, per I personally, I would love that stuff. Do you want to be able to put um, a Busan warp drive in your peer ship? I would, uh, yes, because if it if it only fits in Busan ships, then that I think yeah that that would kind of defeat the point. Uh, though I could also imagine if you if you stray too far uh, from um, from a certain kind of ship, like perhaps the Busan, since it's it's only tech, uh, and you you have to perhaps add something in between that you might also lose some of the benefits or have some other quirks happening. Because it's a, a Busan uh, uh, jump drive in a in a peer ship or, or something like that, yeah. I think uh, go... can I also just comment on that one as well? Yeah, uh, if I need John. Um, but, so, of course. Uh, sorry, I, I don't mean to chip in or anything like that. I was just wanted to go off what you're saying. Um, in regards to that, I think, for instance, like warp drives and generalized things like radars and things like that should not um, should not be. Um, Manufacturer specific. I think, for instance, uh, let's let's take the only faction for instance. They have a trait which enhances their stealth capabilities. So, if the only and they also have a trait which um, also allows uh, gives them an advantage with technology, for instance. So, if we take what the only has advantageous wise and so on, and say their stealth application is far superior to all the other factions current. Um, so why not enhance or give them a module that enhances that entire thing, that entire aspect of what Oni can create, like create. They're so good at stealth that they make the best stealth um, modules. And then that gives them priority in that regard of, um, of that one component. And it makes sense for them to have that in the and basically for lore as well later on down the line. For instance, MUD has um, very good like uh, power or like uh, the, um, what is it? The firepower application. Now, if MUD's firepower application is so good and everything like that, give the, like uh, allow them to have in some modules, not all modules, because you, you want to give equal spread of um, firepower because you don't want one faction to have priority too much over it, um, but give them a, a particular module having more firepower, but that's because of their faction having that manufacturing blueprint. And then with Ooster, they have hull reinforcement. Hull reinforcement is such a crucial part of what the game is going to basically offer and supply for us that you know if you give them a specific module, give it towards those kind of things. Don't give it to well, in my opinion, this is my opinion. Sorry, don't uh, don't give it to the general. Um, like warp drive, your your um, your thrusters, all of those things and so on, because those are those are like the common stuff that should be available across everything, for instance, and um, and, and rather give it to what particular things that are going to enhance your ship more because it came from that faction. Give give that faction a little bit more lore behind the the creating of that item and give give it that as a purpose for it and so on. Like I said, like only has stuff. Do something with stuff. Uh, Mud has firepower. Do something with firepower. Uh, Ooster has hull reinforcement. Do something with that, for instance. I think that's pretty cool. That, that's just my opinion, of course. I completely agree. And, and actually, to, just to clarify, it was not my suggestion that that they actually have exclusive things. I completely, I would say, let give everybody a warp drive, but have the the, the exact configuration be slightly different per manufacturer. And I think that can go for anything. You can have a one radar is a little bit longer range, but consumes more energy, right? You can you can you can define so many characteristics for these modules, and you can uh, 
And I think that would be really cool because that means you can really min-max and really create unique ships. If there's only uh, one warp drive that fits in your in your ship or at least one manufacturer, uh, then that would, yeah, for me, limit things a bit too much. I mean, I mean, I wouldn't run away, but I, I would prefer more customization options. And I think you can uh, get it that way. Yeah, and I think if you're new to Star Atlas and you're listening to this, that's a key. This is, we're talking about min-maxing, like if you're doing World of Warcraft and you want to do a 40-person dungeon and you want to get geared out to the max so that we can go do this, that's what we're talking about. But when you start the game, you're not going to have to make these decisions. You can, but you won't have to, and you'll, you'll be doing fine. Yeah, no, 100%. Like, I 100% agree with, like, the whole factor of, um, you know, having each faction having their own like little thing for it and so on i what i will say though on it and then i do think it's capable that they can do it and so on is it is not something that should be expected if they do do it it should not be something that is expected within the first few iterations of it because first first and foremost that's that that takes a lot of coding and that's a lot of also uh, linking to see how each one would work with each in particular ship because now you're adding more and more and more components dragged across each uh, individual faction because i mean we don't only have the three main factions we have uh we have like there's still like another five afterwards or well four technically fumble being uh, a contribution of both so i would say i love the idea and i would want to have it for sure but we might not see it in the first iteration of how the modules come into play we may see it a little bit further down the line like it could be a target thing but it, would, it's, it, is, it is going to take a lot of programming and coding to get into that because it's, it's, we, we're now not adding one faction for or one generalized thing. We're adding a massive new um, item list, basically, that comes into play. All right, very cool. Did you, Equinox, I saw you unmuted. Yeah, I just wanted to um, continue on from that conversation. Um, Rony, so... What I've been thinking about is um, the concept of, I guess, um, end game gear, or in this case, I guess, end game modules. And from my understanding, it, it looks like that the um, the rainbow uh, manufacturer seems like that they're going to be the the you know the, the manufacturer that you you want to have as an in like end game um, item, I guess. So, what do you guys think about this? Because if if everyone's eventually just going to go for the end game gear, would it be wise to then just purchase the, the rainbow ships? And what do you guys think will happen to the to the other ships from the other factions if you know um the end game gear becomes um I guess not overpowered but you know better than the rest of them. Does that make them re redundant in a way? What do you guys think about that? Can you can you firstly on that and so on? I like the question, but can you clarify a little bit why you think the rainbow is the end game gear? Yeah, yeah because I, think, I just want to know a little bit. Because I think um, the, the the resources that you need to manufacture the 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 rainbow line, um, you need to get them from from deep space, right? So yeah, I, I assume that the the materials are going to be the most rare, the most expensive. Just from the fact that but you can also do that with Tufa as well, though I think. Yeah, yeah. Grace, now do you have a question? Uh, yeah, I do have a question, and also I just want to say okay. that yeah, these these spaces are just so cool. I love I love listening to all the uh, all the questions and is the. And it's fascinating, <laughs> isn't it? I love. I learn so much every time we do these. So. Great Definitely. conversations. <laughs> <laughs> so i just uh, first i want to just say that uh about the fatoli that yeah i do i i i love the lore of the fatoli and uh i believe that they will have something to do with the the end game and just because you know you think about the lore about um you know about, uh, i think his name was Ankh, the person like the guy who helps humans get off the earth and it's just like you know on the one hand he helped humans get off the earth but on the other hand it's like oh well destroyed earth like in the in the process so it's kind of like a, a you know they help you but then there's a lot of destruction and uh, stuff like that that comes along with their help so that's kind of how I see the Fatoli 
but uh yeah but my question uh yeah my question is um about the crew and so I was just wondering, so like, cause my, my kind of strategy is like, I kind of just see like right now we should just be buying, um, either the ships that we want to use for specific missions that we want to do, or just like try to get a wide range of ships so that you can pretty much do a mission, you know? So like, you know, cause when you gain loyalty that you're going to be put on missions and you just need to have a ship that, that can do like a, a variety of different missions. I don't think it really matters that much at this point uh who makes the ship but i think the question about the crew does uh peak curiosity because like they said that you know if this yeah. ship pieces crew members will uh you know will get a buff so i was just wondering um will we able to like i don't know like <laughs> it kind of sounds weird saying it like this but will we be able to buy these this mp mp uh, c to crew the ship on the marketplace and if so like will will like it, let's say if i'm a mud but i have a visa ship with v with um booster uh members on it will they like get attacked in mud territory or how does that work so i kind of have a little bit of an answer for you uh on that so i believe in the beginning of the game and so on you uh obviously your character selection and so on is like you can randomize it as such but per faction and so on you're going to uh in that current faction you will be only able to get a set crew or, or set race of crew or set faction crew for instance but how you will be able to gain crew of the opposite faction is uh i believe it would become later on down the line when factions drift and conquer uh, regions that are only like say for instance if a, if a mud conquers an only region then that then that and then that sector or that uh, that area that the mud have captured would the uh, the university would essentially bring uh, bring out um uh basically npcs that are related towards that faction so i don't know if in the beginning we will be able to do like straight away select which or if um, if the races really don't, or if the faction races don't mind so much per faction, but um, I I I have heard that you, as we go along, we capture certain regions, we will be able to get uh, NPCs that are related towards that region's um, technically faction. So a mud having a certain section of the Oni would produce Oni NPCs out of those universities in that region. So I don't know if in the beginning, uh, I don't. This is a very good question. So I'd love to <laughs> love to have an actual final answer, but I know that you will actually be able to get like other faction NPCs as uh, as more regions are taken over and so on. Yeah, that that makes sense. Um um because i was just wondering because like right now when we when we bought our ships up until this point like they come with a crew already so i assume that uh the crew that that has come with our with our ships up until this point is the um is the is like the race of the the ship manufacturer i don't know but i just assume that but in the future to buy the ship i mean that makes logical going to be crewed right we're going to have to buy like all the components and the crew members like uh, separately right yeah well you're going to have to hire crew members from a university that's why the universities are put in place and so on for that um and obviously you don't necessarily need to get all the crew from one university but there is a disadvantage from not getting them from one university so you know you have to always take those things into mind as well So I think, Mike, you also had brought up another point. I was scrolling through some of the comments, um, and I think you brought up an interesting point about blueprints, right? With blueprints, with blueprints not being able to be sold, can they be shared for collaborative shipbuilding? And I kind of want—I know Ronald touched on that a little bit earlier, but I kind of wanted to hear what everybody else thought about that. <laughs> uh, when you make, when you make, like, when you say, like, collab, uh, collab and so on are you meaning like that so you have a blueprint, ship be... blueprint and then you want to collaborate with someone who has a ship manufacturing or 
you know, like you don't have the manufacturer yourself, but somebody else does. But you're the owner of the blueprint. Is that making sense? Oh, okay. I understand. But it's within your own faction, correct? For instance, or is it outside of your faction as well? M Mike? Like, or can, can so I, the, the, just the way, the way I was about it was like, you know, so I guess um, if I'm a mud, most likely I'll be uh, doing uh, missions or um, I'll be doing missions for the Pierce. Right? So I'll be earning and the the way I'll be earning blueprints is by doing shipments. So um, right. there, there could be a, a possibility where someone will have done a whole bunch of missions and have like blueprints for the really good ships, but have no mining or land. And like they just spent all their money on ships and then now they just, they bunch of blueprints and they don't have any like, uh, infrastructure for use to, for like building a ship and there might be somebody else who like has a bunch of land mining but like uh only has doesn't have as many like the blue all the blueprints that they want so how would those people be able to collaborate you know i can't hold my blueprint but would they have to like hire me or how, how would that work I think this is an absolute question for chub to be honest like i i, <laughs> I can speculate but i think that that's that's a chip on question right there. I mean, I well, I would just buy them from someone, right? If I have the the recipe and I need the mats, I would just buy them on the market and then I could build the ship and then sell it. Yeah, the, the land and the mining, of course, is not a problem at all because you can just buy the resources. But the question about having a shipyard to actually construct the ship, as far, but I mean, I, I would like to hear from Chip when I saw him mute, but as far as I'm aware, you can actually... Um, actually do that. I mean, the blueprints are account bound, so you will have to operate the shipyard uh, instead of uh, a, a different NPC crew member potentially. Or, But but let's chip, chip if you want to chime in. I'm very curious as well. Yeah, sorry. I'm multitasking. Just re repeat the question and I'll, I'll give it a shot. Let's say you have a blueprint, but you don't have a shipyard. Can you use somebody else's shipyard? Or can that person hire you? So not the long-term vision is that you can use facilities that you don't own and pay a, a fee to use them. Very cool. Perfect. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and then I know Karush had a question as well. And this is something I was interested in too. Um, so, in the in the document, it talks about if you raising loyalty with, say, the Jorvik or the ECOS, can it actually lower your loyalty with COP factions? And how does that work out? So if you're gaining loyalty with one of these outside factions, could it negatively it can negatively affect your internal faction relationships? I believe uh, Chip did touch on this before. I think in our twi in our previous Twitter space. Sorry. Chip, if you actually want to chip in on this one and, and actually explain it more, I think it would be relevant for you to do so. Yeah, the, without going into too much specifics, the, there will be kind of interdependencies on on some of those banished factions where, yeah, if you if you potentially if you increase your loyalty with with the Jorvix, maybe the the ecos go down, or maybe your your. Uh, your council faction um, standing goes down. There, there should be a minimum there. You don't want to be locked out of your own home faction, right? But that there will be the the point there is that there will be interdependencies in both directions for loyalty. Okay, but... I think that's so cool. Yeah, like I... it, it offers so much for you and so on because you have to think now. If you're going to stay in this in this certain region with the Jorvik or the Tufa or the Fatoli, whatever, they have certain actions that they do that goes against COP so, or against um, any of the other factions. So essentially, you're not just losing like reputation with your uh, your main faction, which is like the Co or which is like um, Mad Oni or Uster, but you're also losing reputation with the other factions as well. Because, for instance, the, the Jorvik could absolutely hate the guts of the Tufa, for instance. And now you're associating with the Tufa. Now, what's going to happen? The Jorvik are going to have 
a or you're going to get hit more by the NPC Jorvik than what you previously were because now you're operating in the Tufa or with the Tufa constantly. I think that's amazing and it's such cool, it's such it's so cool to think about. Yeah, no, I agree. I think with the release of this um, document, it just adds so many more layers to gameplay and to strategizing, and it's just really cool. <laughs> so, and then I guess, let's see. Ashiki, you hopped up back up here. Did you have did you have something to add to that one or uh yeah, no, I'm just really excited about all the details that are coming up here. Um love to to speculate, you know. Um yeah, I, I just wonder, you know, what do you think is, is next? Um because there's there's Dan, there's crew, there's so many details that we talked about. What are what are we excited about next? Um I think we're excited. I would act <laughs> go no go go for it Ash you were saying no I was just saying I think we're excited about everything I think there's a lot of things coming up this year that are just going to be really exciting mm. I think something that's really cool as well is the application for cosmetics land like you know for and like where they may be bound to further on down the line and so on for instance, uh, as we know, cosmetic land is going to be used for uh, like guild halls or building um, infrastructure, maybe say like a city or something like that later on down the line. But I mean, and uh, and we've got to also think like, you know, where is uh, is this land going to be bound to and so on? Um, from what we know, it is going to basically be mainly in space stations where you're going to be able to get this cosmetic land and then build up like an entire like guild hall or I don't exactly know what what the thought pattern behind that could be and so on, but uh, or what structures you could build on that land. But also, like with land and everything like that, we understand all of the stuff for how minerals are going to come about, or we somewhat understand what minerals and how the farming uh, aspect as well. But I mean, also to think about is like your own quarters, because I mean, I, I know for a fact with a lot of like the uh, town halls, uh, Swagner also spoke about uh, how. Um, you with like for instance the the posters you're going to be able to within your own quarters you're going to be able to show off anything that's inside there basically and posters uh, up against the wall like the rebirth stuff for instance that's good that can be up against your wall in in these quarters which will be cosmetic land now that's also something cool to think about very cool so i just added jared jared can you hear me you're a representative from ygg did you have a question for the panel yeah so uh great to be here um i'm yeah i'm the new game ambassador for ygg and i was just thinking about earlier i'm actually staring at my 3d printer right now and i know it was mentioned in a previous twitter space that most of the ships would be made through 3d printing so uh w when they were talking about making specific ship parts available to only certain factions it didn't like the technology just didn't quite fit with me on that what do you on that basically what do you mean it doesn't just quite fit with you for instance well, be because oh, yeah no please just elaborate on uh, that oh sure so like in additive manufacturing um you know all the 3d printers have like the same core aspect like they all follow the same uh code the to, to print the objects and so like they were there would have to, i guess unless there were different uh printing processes for each faction which you know th there could be um yeah so so um yeah i appreciate this question i was i was the one talking about the that the ships would be 3D printed, and what I was getting at with um, the differences between the manufacturers is that each manufacturer has their own blueprints, or the I guess the 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 file that tells the 3D printer you know how how to print it. But then there's also further um, proprietary information associated with what materials go into the filaments associated with printing, and those are those are proprietary alloys or different mixtures of um, different mixtures of, of materials and where those those mixtures are, are put into the blueprints that um, 
give each ship their their unique kind of um, blueprint slash, I guess, f- unique file format, right? Does that make more sense? Yeah, definitely. That okay. Yeah, so different filament blends, like you know, a PLA or PLA plus or TPA. Sure. Yeah, that, except okay. you know, less plastics and more alloys and right. the, the other sci-fi type materials. You know, carbon nanotubes. It, you know, just just the sky's the limit on on concocting this stuff. But the it, the the 3D printing process itself isn't proprietary to the, each of the manufacturers. It's the blueprints and the the filaments they're using. Gotcha. Yeah, I would say that the, I mean, besides the filaments, right? I mean. The blueprint is what's all about. If you, I mean, if you look in, uh, into two different car engine manufacturers, they're both made from metal, for example. But I mean, the way how they created them is is, is uh, what makes the engine so different. So the filament being one thing, but even without that, I mean, if you think about uh, printing plastic ships, of course, I completely understand. But that's just a plastic, well, nothing. But if you're if you're looking into the future and you can really print more intricate. Uh, electrical pathways and whatnot, really on a micro nanoscale, um, then it's super crucial, of course, to to get the balance right. Given a different filament, you can make things a bit different. I think there's so much uh, actually working for this uh, gameplay mechanic and for this lore mechanic. That uh, yeah, I, I really, it's really cool stuff. You actually made me think of something so cool right now because when you're when you're basically elaborating on that with like the cars now, for instance, I'm just thinking of like uh, basically like uh, JDMs right now. These vehicles that are uh, technically were stock taken out of that entire thing where the Pierce has, for instance, let's use the Pierce for instance, uh, a Pierce F4 for instance, has all of these certain modules. Now you've taken most of those modules out and you've added certain things from different manufacturers which add to the performance of the vehicle or the performance of the ship at the end of the day improving certain aspects of it whether it's torque horsepower whatever it is um in the vehicle's aspect but here the ships it's whether you have better stealth better um better firepower better speed and space and things like that that's the cool i'm actually just i'm just sitting here and i'm like I'm, my, my mind is being blown at the fact because i was just thinking of that i was just like that's the whole that's the whole jdm thing at the end of the day it's taking what's stock and modifying it completely to being something that's absolutely out of this world whether it's in, a, in any of those other fields stealth attack reinforcement whatever that's that's so cool to think about Absolutely, I'm pretty sure there will be a guild that will, um, yeah, that will make it so. It will, it will become a JDM um, <laughs> in this uh, I'm, galaxy. I'm literally, I'm literally going to make sure that one of my vehicles, I'm going to make it the Pierce X6. One of them is going to be fully kitted out. It'll be a speed demon, that's for sure. <laughs> Okay, so I do have, so one question I guess I I would have and that I've been kind of seeing, so with the release of this and for pure gameplay, do you see for people who are newly joining, for it to be more beneficial in choosing the right faction or the right guild, right? Because I know not all the guilds are multifactional, and so I'm wondering how that affects them differently now with this extra information that we have. It depends on what's most important to you. I mean, if you... Playing the game a certain way, like stealth, if you're Oni, right? If you want to play stealthy and that's what's most important to you in this game, then you just join that faction and you can find a guild. Or if if the community is the most important, then I would start at the guild first. Go from there. Yeah, no, 100% agree with that and so on. It's it's literally just personal preference at the end of the day. It's, It's what do you want to do? Do you want to play with people? Are you more orientated with friends? And is that something that you want to, or socializing, is that something more that you want to do? Then 100% guild. But if it's gameplay aspect, then faction all the way. Because each of the factions have their have their own unique certain aspects to them. So it's deciding what is it that you want to do uh, within those factions and then choosing along that along that line at the end of the day.
Oh, is Ash cutting in and out for me, or is? Or yeah, is no, just... I'm not hearing. I'm not hearing. Yeah, Ash I was hearing her either. <laughs> I think she was cutting in and out for me as well. I was like, wait, wait, wait what's going on? Um, all right, but I, another question that I want to basically uh, reiterate on that Equinox was asking and so on, with like the end game being the Fatoli and everything like that, and then you also talking about how. Um, you know, the resources for that is going to be so much more expensive or it's going to take longer to craft and everything like that. For, for like, let's say now, I don't know, let's say, uh, how do I, how do I wear this properly and so on? If you, if you had the opportunity, because I, I, from what I understand how they're going to release the zones, we're going to have safe zone first, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, we'll have safe zone first. And we'll have all the things that come with safe zone. And then we'll have medium zone that comes next. Or um, do you think they'll release medium and high zone right away as well? I, I like to get like people's opinion on that. I don't know. I don't know if Chip can uh, like maybe comment on that if they're going to release it in a certain way. Um, that might be something that's only much, much, much further down the line. But in regards to that, for instance, if they do release the medium zone first and so on, I want to hear from you guys. What is your opinion on or what faction are you guys going to go look for mainly within those places? Because now we have the uh, the two Fumble um, manufacturers or factions opening up to us like instantly within uh, within having access towards those medium zones. So now, are you going to go for the Jorvik or are you going to go for the uh, uh, oh, yeah, I'm sorry if I butcher this. The ecos, for instance, um, like what would what would your personal preference within your guilds be, or what why and and also why would you go to these factions, for instance? Yeah, I think it depends on what your goals and what your vision of your guild is, right? In, in Equinox, we're um, super interested in the exploration part and uh, infrastructure building, so we would re really focus our resources on on these parts of the game and kind of mid maxing and i don't think it matters much uh, what kind of materials it is at the end of the day it matters to to expand and explore the, the universe the metaverse yeah <clears throat> i mean us being of course into shipbuilding itself we'll try to just get contact with everybody um, and try to build as many different ships as we can um that's sad. Oh, actually, let me let me do a shout out to all Avians. Uh, somebody asked me in my own uh, in our Discord chat. So uh, Avians, good to have you here. Um, but so you mentioned that Jorvik and uh, Akos will be right away accessible to us uh, because there is no medium risk zone. Ronin, did I get that correctly? Because I'm not entirely sure that's the case. Yeah, no, I no. Think... So what I what I said is like the safe zone is going to be what our first yeah true uh, land yeah. is coming out, and then they may release that the next one is the medium for instance and the medium gives us access to two more factions now for instance now i don't necessarily know whether or not you're going to be able to gain uh loyalty with both and then build both at the same time so if you had to choose one why would you choose it at the end of the day because they are two very important factions because one being the ecos where they um i believe don't quote me on this, but I believe a lot of like the Fumble Ecos are heavy into um, terraforming, or the Fumble line itself is very heavy into terraforming. So they are going to be a uh, a uh, an essential shipbuilding faction um, at the end of the day. But like, which one of the two would you go into, basically, if you had to choose? Because you could not maybe necessarily go into both. No, no. I, so I cannot go into both. That is for sure. Um, personally, I would I would take the the Eagles because I I really love the aesthetic of their ships. Um, but even I think with uh, just pra practical reasons, having the ability or an additional ability to terraform land uh, might be worth more to me than having just uh, yeah, right the bios the bios uh, style of ships the more scrapyard look of ships that, that the <laughs> yeah, only, the DIY. I mean, hey yeah, can i jump in here real quick i'm sorry i'm yeah. gonna jump in before i get dumped um Please. ash has lost audio so we can uh continue i guess and wrap it up um but she if <laughs> yeah. she restarts twitter it's gonna drop the call 
Yeah, and she doesn't, so I, we don't, yeah. So we could keep going or we can wrap it up. It's been an hour, uh, 25 minutes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's up to everybody here or anything like that. That's why I posed the question more so because I thought her audio did drop and everything like that. Because from, so uh, I don't know so much if Chip can basically elaborate on this, uh, if the zones are going to come up in each their own like wave, for instance, where we have safe zone first, medium zone second, and then lost will be the high zone. So as we know, uh, with like, as we were talking now with the ecos, the ecos are terraforming uh, a completely. They, they, they honestly, they want to. The, uh, I'm, I'm going to quote uh, Didi's words for this and so on. Dreaming Jag's words is they're literally the hippies of the space, but they honestly just want to have a, a, a fun time terraforming an entire planet world or destroying another civilization to terraform a completely new planet. And so, like you said, they offer such a new, um, such a diverse aspect for what our game is going to offer so and then uh the uh the jorvik offering that more so diy look and ship right there whether it's the pack lights or the earp they both look super diy and um yeah they have their own uh <laughs> i guess their own personal aesthetic to each of them i haven't done so much lore finding on the jorvik side so I don't know if there is a massive amount of stuff that they may have, but I mean, in my opinion, I'm going to go uh, Ecos because they terraform many a planet. Yeah, it's actually interesting to think about it, that, that the, 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 I think the Eco ship line is the only ship line actually that really has something unique um, gameplay related right i mean some ships will have better cannons have better stealth abilities whatever but really the ability to terraform is is not really uh yeah i i wonder actually i'm not sure if since we lost ashes but perhaps chipto could could you is there is there something additional planned with other ship lines that have a really unique characteristic if if you are if you are willing to perhaps give us a little bit or yes I, I have some things in mind that I don't want to say because I'm really excited about it. <laughs> so <laughs> No awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Um I <laughs> remember I did mention last time that I th there will be different ways for players to interact with the environment and, and potentially permanently or maybe not permanently, but like significantly change um whether it be you know, just, just basically significantly change their environment. So remember, and they, one of the pre well, no, one of the key examples is Ecos with terraforming via bombings. But um, I have in mind some some other ideas that are similar in theme. Oh my gosh! Ooh. Now I'm gonna now now I'm gonna go for the rest of this week and the and, weekend. And I and Thank I haven't you. seen anybody in the community mention it yet. <laughs> so. No. Yeah. Oh, Perhaps no, the no, Tufa no, can make rock weekend. planets, right? Perhaps <laughs> the Tufa can spread rock, grow rock, or something. Yeah, I know. I mean, that would be really interesting uh, aspect because I actually think the Tufa will, because of their whole aspect of the designing of the ships with asteroids, they they may be a faction that is not prioritized towards a land or a space station, they could have their entire thing on an asteroid. That would be so flippant cool. Like, what the hell? They literally pulled the ships out of the asteroid that they're on. Like, that would be that would be so cool. Um, for sure. But for now, sure. Now, now we have to spend the rest of this weekend thinking... What did you do? What did you do, Ash? <laughs> I think she muted everybody temporarily. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she but, can't yeah, talk. Just... We can't talk. Yeah, no, nobody can talk anymore. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, she can't hear us. I, I, wait, I, 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 wait, but Chip, can you can you give a slight hint at it? Like it's just like I don't know, like literally leaving one breadcrumb so that I can go and think it at this weekend, please. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to say anything about it later. Please, oh, I need to know. Yeah. I need at least just one bed come so that I can at least have a, a, a heading. I need a heading. The DM me. 
Okay, okay, oh, okay, okay. How many DMs do you want? I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah. doing, I'm doing it right Actually, now. Actually, no, no. 